Werewolves, Werebears, Kitsune, Tengu. Let's talk about shifters. Didn't we already do a video on Were-Sharks? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Then how is a shifter different? <sighs> I'll get the books. In Pathfinder, the shifter class allows you some aspects of beast shape in minor forms like claws and actual attacks, and in major forms more akin to actual shape changing. Really? You done? You can't wild shape into pudding. With the introduction of the Path of Beast Barbarian in Tasha's, this is effectively the same thing, taking the negative aspects of becoming a were-creature and fusing it with a class to enable ease of balancing for a gameplay mechanic. But for some reason, in 5th edition, we now have this new shifter race, which at a glance doesn't really break any new ground. Normal stats, dark vision, blah 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 blah. But there's a little bit of a secret that they haven't told anyone yet. Go ahead, bring it in. Bring it in. They get to cheat. So essentially, if you're looking at playing a shifter, what has happened is you said to your DM, I want to be a werewolf. And your DM watched my video on were sharks, were goblin sharks, were shark goblins, goblin were shark. Yeah, I think that's it. One way or the other, they watched the video. And your DM came back and said, sure, we can do that, but you're going to be cursed. And you went, oh, but I wanted unlimited bestial power with none of the drawbacks. Well, you're in luck because uh, here you go. Shifting. It's now a bonus action. I shit you not. As a bonus action, you assume a more bestial appearance. This transformation lasts one minute or until you die or until you revert to your normal appearance as a bonus action. When you shift, you gain temporary hit points equal to two times your proficiency bonus. As well, the number of times you can shift is equal to your proficiency bonus, and you regain those uses at the end of a long rest. What they've done here is they've given the players total control over their shifting powers as a trade-off to a racial trait or a racial feat. And kind of on the fence about this, on the one end, you could be getting things like a bonus feat or bonus stats, or that weird eerie totem things Hexblood have. You know, the thing where you pull out your own teeth? It's pretty weird. Either way, if I do have a player that contracts lycanthropy, let them take a feat to slightly gain control of it. This is headed in the good direction, but because of this forced trade-off, you're losing all the cool racial uniqueness for what essentially could be a pickup feat or just part of your class. I know, now hear me out. I like the shifter race as an idea, but I honestly think that it should be a sub-race or a racial heritage that you attach to any other creature race. So essentially what Watsi is saying is that your dad was a big old rock monster and your mom was a tiefling with a mastery of fire, but since your poor old granddad got bitten by a puppy one day, you're a wolf boy now. Tough luck. I really don't understand where this fear of templates comes from. If you're a tiefling and your father was a werewolf, cool. You're a tiefling first. Now, if you want, you can swap out one of the shifter racial feats, and there you go. That's it. It makes way more sense in almost all situations. Unless you have a town of, like, I don't know, otter folk, shifters, or maybe a cult of people who just really love snakes, it doesn't make sense for the whole race of shifters to be so similar. That being said, I really do think this is a good direction to be going in the future. No, not under the weird shit. Like the hex blood, the shifter class being a hereditary legacy added on top of things. <laughs> Hold on a second. So your grandpappy was bitten by a llama, cursed by a llama, or just is really into llamas. No, wait, no, blur that out. Blur, blur it out. Either way, you get to choose the basis of your shifter race. This is the one thing you have as a player over just being cursed by something the DM has given you, which is kind of cool. You take on some of those physical traits and they don't do anything mechanically except, I don't know, make the internet hot and bothered. Got that out. You do, however, get to shift into cool shit when you do shift. That's hard to say. From the mechanical side of things, you would just pick one of the features just as you would if you were picking the shifter race, but you pick it as any other class and just swap it out for one of the racial feats. An example of this is Beast Hide, which gains you an additional 1d6 temporary hit points whenever you do shift, as well as a plus one to your AC while shifted. Long Tooth allows you to use your bonus action while shifted to do 1d6 piercing damage plus your strength modifier instead of bludgeoning damage like normal regular unarmed strikes. Once again, this is a great example of just flavoring this into a class. Whether it's a monk or a barbarian, your unarmed strikes now use your fang or claw little to no effort to swap it out the same thing could be done with swift stride which is essentially giving you an extra 10 feet of movement or as a reaction you can move 10 feet away whenever a creature moves within five feet of you this doesn't provoke attacks of opportunity that's pretty cool i like swift stride and then lastly something like wild hunt which while shifting you have advantage on wisdom checks and no creature within 30 feet of you can make an attack against you with advantage unless you are incapacitated essentially you're gaining access to one feature of a wear creature each time you shift but currently it seems like they just don't have a lot of unique variants like shark bites would probably do the way more than a d6 and also induce bleeding llama spit could blind someone for a round or two massive tentacle arm for super grapply builds sounds pretty amazing but wait wait a minute did wild hunt just say no creature can have advantage on you within 30 feet are you fucking kidding me do that every time no i'm serious that's the only one you should take how did they get their play testing did the magic the gathering people get to design this race hold on hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on let me read this wisdom checks and saving but no advantage huh, no wisdom check or save it's just just flat no advantage that in itself is pretty good but i do like the llama spit idea like Honestly, I'm just really excited that you get temporary HP worth two times your proficiency bonus. Good on you guys for putting math back into the game. 
I do like math. There's a lot of fun options. What these builds don't give you is some of the flavor that's going full wear shark or otter folk might give you. Things like water breathing or swim speeds. Honestly, the boons from your shifting rank would work much better as classes, allowing you to choose additional features every few levels. I think that would really make this a fun racial variant. Much like the Kitsune or the Tengu, which are racial shifters, essentially unlocking more and more of their abilities as they level anyways, and gaining access to unique magics and skills based around their respective floors. As for the shifter, it just feels like it's missing that bit of flavor to make it that truly unique race. Then again, you could always just take something from the Beast Barbarian or the Path of the Beast Barbarian and just slap it on any race you want, and I think you'd have a much better time. Plus, at level 10, you get that infectious bite thing that turns your targets into a rabid furry. Wait, nope, I read that wrong. Essentially, at the end of the day, this allows you to really customize what type of wear creature you want to be moving forward, but any good DM would just let you do that to begin with. You really might as well just pick a wear creature or a regular creature that you like, and then for some real fun, Pick a curse. Let your DM pick a curse. Just have fun with it. That or, I don't know, make sure you put down some newspaper for accidents that are going to happen. Imagine how much time you have to spend shaving. Maybe we just stick to the tiefling goats. Dwarven bears? Bear wear dwarves. The list goes on. Thanks for watching, everybody. And a big thanks to all the Patreon members who help support this channel and make these sweet videos possible. If you've played a shifter or have a shifter or have a wear inspired creature go ahead and leave that in the comments down below as well as remember to like comment and subscribe because the youtube gods are kind of dicks sometimes yeah that's all i got remember to keep your dice on the table and get out there and sniff those players butts i mean characters butts. sniff the other characters butts because it's a dog joke hmm, what else do dogs do i don't know maybe lick their nope never mind